2013, the year many from Ghana's northern regions took for granted, but meant football wilderness and by a large stretch, a winding, complicated and an almost elusive plot back into the country's football elite. Real Tamale United went into the record books as the only side to be relegated from the Ghanaian top flight without winning a single game. The Northern Lions failed to clinch victory in 30 games as they drew 6, lost 24 and conceded as many as 69 goals and scored the paltry 20 goals. 34 years of producing real stars for club and country. You don't need a reminder. Mohamed Gago, three-time Africa Football of the Year, Bedi Pele, Hamza Mohamed, Anna Nikobo, Steven Odro, amongst others, were the toast of football fans. The sight of the beautiful Aliou Mahama Stadium filled with fans watching Division 1 football for the last decade is a worry from the cheap seats to the Tamale Chief. Uh, one of my daily regrets is the fact that there is no premier team in Tamale. Yes. So many of the opportunities are lost. We have struggled over the years to bring in other teams including Real Tamale United to no avail. In fact, it has become a border to almost all sons and daughters of the northern region. It's very, very worrying. It's, it's very, very worrying because um, when, you, when you look around, I mean, look at, it's because of the, the, the premiership clubs here in the north, the reason why these stadiums were, were, were put up. You can't have this wonderful airfield without the Premier League. I mean, uh, we did our best, try all that we can for the past three seasons. I mean, I'm in Tamar City, number 12 came and truncated everything, and then um, all my two two came. We're missing a lot, we're missing a lot, a lot of op opportunities, uh, exposure, you know, the Ghana Premier League can bring a lot of exposure, so we're missing a lot. As a footballer, it worries a lot, because watching Division 1 matches, uh, sometimes we can't fed up with it, because we've not seen the likes of Asante Kotoko, House of Hope, Dreams FC, we've not seen them for so many years. It has felt so close yet so far every other year. Just believing that there will be a representative somehow in the Ghana Premier League. And there will be huge attention on talents in the North again. But the battle has remained a strange one. While All Stars, which remained the pride of the North in the torrid decade, was transformed into Legon cities and now a club based in the south of Ghana, leaving the four northern regions totally shut out now. But there's a growing sense of optimism that this is the year of return. One team from here. Maybe next year we will be in the Premier League. We want to do it this season. This year we are trying our possible best to get a Premier Club in Tamale. We have four first division in Tamale here. At least we are trying to see this year to see whether we can go one can go to Premier League. But I think uh, hopefully uh, one of them can qualify into the Premiership. Having a Premier League team, as Tamale has enjoyed over the past three decades, does bring about massive advantages. But they have been left to feel the pinch. Northern Regional FA Chairman Alaji Abu Hassan Mamadou, popularly known as Alaji Raizo, understands it all. Well, uh, since 1978, we have had Real Tamale United as the a team in the premiership over here they have dominated the uh, northern as uh, the big brother if you want to call it or the northern part yes. Uh, yes. here over the years mm -hmm. but since they exited the premiership we have struggled over the years to bring in other teams including real tamale united to no avail in fact it's has become a border to almost all sons and daughters of the northern region because you realize that most of the younger generation or the current generation would normally look up to most of the players that RTU turns out and then who also moves to other clubs. You have the likes of Sheila and Co moving to Kotoko, uh, Damba and Co moving to Olympus. Yeah. 
Uh, you had the likes of Hamza Muhammad and Co. all moving to Kotoko, Kim Faisal, House of Fook, and then Anna Nikubu and Co. moving to, uh, what is it, uh, Kotoko, mm. Mahama and Lai to House of Fook. And so at any point in time, you had the current generation actually looking up to others at that level. But ever since RT, you moved. Uh, from uh, got demoted from the premiership, you realize that uh, they don't really have icons they look up to week in, week out. Then the fact that they would have the opportunity of watching other stars from other clubs that visit Northern Region to play against Real Tamal United was itself an incentive or motivation. So they go there, they copy styles, and then how they... Uh, the play of other play, uh, teams. teams yeah. So there was a lot players learned almost every week because of the different pattern of play of the various clubs that came here to play with uh, Real Tamale United. But all that is gone with the win. And uh, you have the edifice there, uh, the Ali Mama Sports Stadium, which is supposed to be uh, a pitch that at least these up and coming stars would be exhibiting their talents on a weekly basis, but unfortunately, it's become like a white elephant where musicians, uh, which is now the mainstay of musicians, where they go to actually use it for musical concerts as against football, which was the reason why the edifice was constructed. Really, really, really. And economically, it has also affected the business community. Mm. We had our sisters, our mothers, aunties who go there on a weekly basis to go and sell their wares, either water, drinks, uh, food to patrons of uh, matches mm. on uh, match days. But ever since Archie, you got exited uh, from the premiership, you realize that most of them. Uh, have had to either stop altogether because that was where they used to go to sell their wares and yeah. then it's been a challenge. Minority Leader and Tamale South Member of Parliament, Honorable Harun Idrisu, equally shares the pain of no Ghana Premier League representation up north. They need exposure, they need an opportunity and they need a platform hmm. to showcase their skills and their talent. Uh, one of my Daily record is the fact that there's no premier team in Tamale. Yes. So many of the opportunities are lost yeah. because we don't have a premier team. That's why I pray that either RTU or State Fans uh, FC or Tamale City yes. uh, makes it this time around. No Ghana Premier League club in Tamale means there's an upset in the supply chain of talents. From Colts clubs to Division 2 and to Division 1 clubs onto the Ghana Premier League clubs if they exist, before the usual attraction from Kumase and Accra, base clubs, used to be the norm. Tamale Rail Republicans is responsible for most of the accomplished football talents that shone through from coach level to international level. Republicans started producing this, uh, some of these great stars when myself wasn't uh, around. Yes. I wasn't the coach of the club, but the club was producing uh, great stars. Uh, in time past, uh, Shaibu Grant, mm -hmm. who played for the national team, was from Real Republicans, Clifford Adai, Mumune Gamel, uh, Anani Kubo, uh, Abu Imuru, when he also came to Tamale, he played for Real Republicans. I understand Abiri Pelo also, when he first came to Tamale, he was trading with uh, Real Republicans. Then uh, in those days, these are the players Republican has, Republicans have produced. And then uh, when, during my tenure as the coach of the club, the Republicans has produced a lot of players again. Uh, Sheila Alassan, Sheila Iliasu, Hamza Mohammed, Michael Anaba, Mubarak Wakasu, Idi Yekini, uh, many of them. Yeah, Mohammed Wahid, uh, Mohammed Bashiru, popular known as Asasi, many of the players. Um, Can uh, coming from here? Uh, Al Hassan Dewo is CEO of Republicans and the Northern Regional Juvenile Committee Chairman. He further explains the supply chain has been truncated and super talents are going waste without a Premier League club surfacing for about a decade. 
when I when there was a premier club in in, in Tamale, uh, when RTU was in the premiership, sometimes uh, a player could just uh, migrate from coast and then he goes to play for RTU, and uh, then uh, that was it. But now that the premier club is not there, the players play when they migrate from coast. But thank God now they, there are is division two wow. clubs, division wow. one clubs in Tamale. When they migrate from Kuhu, then they play for those uh, Division 2 clubs. But when RTU was there, if there's a premier match, I could remember when there's a premier match and then Kotoko Haas is coming here. There are players who you will be hearing of. This player is playing for Haas, he's playing for Kotoko, uh, he's playing the national team. When you are sending your young kicks to the park, you'll be telling them about this player, when you go watch this player, watch the way he plays. And some of them, they go to their field, they make friendship with some of these players, they, become, they became their mentors kind of thing. And they will be communicating with such players, they will be encouraging them and then giving them uh, boos and Jesus in relation to football. It was very good. But now, Premiership is not there. It's very difficult for these young kicks to have that kind of interaction with uh, top players down south. So much is going down the drain these days. And the cry for a Ghana Premier League representative is getting louder. Shilia Hassan is a brother of the 2006 World Cup squad member Shilia Eliasu, and he understands what the northern sector is missing. Yes, it's worth us a lot because we have a talent here. And in the first division, too, we have four the first division in Tamil here. At least we we're trying to see this year to see whether we can go, one can go to Premier League. But uh, it's a worry. In Tamale, a big stadium like this, we don't have Premier Club. So we are praying for this year to see whether we can get Premier Club. Does it look like it will happen this year? Look at things, I'm sure. Because RTU, Stephas and Tamale City, if you look at their position, I can see that maybe it will be possible. And that's the hope, the strong sense of optimism that a wind of change is coming their way this season. If that is to be achieved, it will hugely hinge on the performances of the traditional Real Tamale United, Mushrooming Tamale City and Steadfast FC. Three teams in the Ghana Division 1 League Zone 1 showing promise. The wilderness best describes Division 1 and the struggle to stay afloat. In the Ghana Division 1 League Zone 1, where four Tamale teams are in contention, it appears Yendi Gbewa are very much off the pace line second to bottom. But there is renewed energy for Steadfast City, Real Tamale United and Tamale City who find themselves in the top 10 at the moment. And my first stop? Your guess is as good as mine. I've just come to visit Real Tamale United. In the background, a little meeting with officials. Real Tamale United is certainly the team to come to when you talk about dominance and football up north. These days though, they are having a bit of a challenge from the likes of Steadfast and Tamale City. We're going to be finding out from the officials and from the players just how they are trying to stop the challenge from the likes of Tamale City and Steadfast. You know, RTU, I mean, is the heart of, of the North. Every Tom, Tom, Dick and Harry wishes to be part of RTU. Even the opponents, Tamale City, they are all part of RTU in, in a different form. They, they will wish RTU would qualify, but they wouldn't want to say it. Yes, every Tom, Dick, everybody in the North, you ask any big man in the North, they will tell you RTU is their team. It's, I mean, when RTU wins, families are happy at home. So that is why we are trying to qualify for people to, I mean, really enjoy, I mean, the beautiful game of football. Currently handled by former player coach Ibrahim Tanko, who has massive Ghana Premier League experience after stints with clubs like Accra Hearts, Volker Medias Professionals, Midyama SC. Indeed, worked with a number of universities in the country. Currently working as a sports director at the University for Development Studies in Tamale. Tanko admits getting back into the Ghana Premier League will be tough. It has not been an easy task. I mean, uh, playing the Division 1, especially in this zone, is not an easy task. Uh, we are doing our best to, I mean, come out tops. 
before the, 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 the end of the league. Yeah. How tough have you found, um, let me say, your noisy neighbours in Tamale City and Stefas? They've been making a lot of noise since we came here. How, how tough have you found that? Yeah, um, you know, it's a derby. And for that matter, they know our boys. And that, that is the more reason why we are finding it difficult, I mean, with them. Because they, they always play with them in town and all that. But should we meet opponents who are not familiar with our boys? I mean, it's easier. But these ones, they are, they are, but this time around, we have adopted strategy that we can easily overcome any of them at any point in time. Shai Butanko is not only steering the wheel into the Ghana Premier League lane, but is fusing in brilliant talents as well. I, I take, uh, I mean, uh, inspiration from the late Professor Mausi Dake. I don't know whether you've heard of him before. It was when I was coaching Voradeb. That was his strategy. When you were in Voradeb, he would find out from you that you can never play football throughout your life. You either choose school or you, you learn a trade and he will go and pay. So that is what I'm carrying with me. That is what I've adopted. So if you are coming to RTU, you, you are a young boy, I ask you, would you like to go to school or you want to, still, you want to play football alone? So those of them who have agreed to go to school, I take them to UDS and of course on scholarship. And his players are leaving no stone unturned in making dozens of followers very happy again. Looking at our quality this season, we have only one target and that target is to qualify, bring out you back to where it belongs and that is the Premier League football. So we are hoping to qualify out you back to the Premier League this season. Yeah. We hope and pray that. Looking at our work, this time around, our work rate is very good. Is very high. We have a good coach who motivates and at least trains us very well. So looking at our training and everything, we'll get there. Hopefully we'll get there. Pride of the North. But that pride has been hit many times in the last decade. While Real Tamale United putting the effort to make a mark, the two rivals are ready to make the jump if the opportunity arises. Tamale City, one of the clubs here in Tamale, hoping to take the place of Real Tamale United. That is it, there's anything like that. They currently sit on the table and are looking forward to qualifying to the Ghana Premier League. As you're aware, the Northern sector, all the regions inclusive, have no representative in the Ghana Premier League. But there's a growing sense of optimism that it might happen this year. We're here to find out the inner workings of the club Tamale City and why they may just be the most qualified out of the three. I'm talking Real Tamale United and Steadfast. Another true son of the land, Hamza Mohammed, former player of Real Tamale United, one of the few national stars who are featured for every national team, captained the Black Star Plays in 1999 and was in the Black Star squad that took part in the 2006 and 2002 Africa Cup of Nations. Hamza says he took on this role to bridge the gap between Tamale and the Ghana Premier League. We did our best, try all that we can for the past three seasons. I mean, Tamale City, number 12 came and truncated everything, and then um, all my two of it took him. We were almost there until that unfortunate thing happened. Uh, we are still working out, and God being so good this time, I think the three teams, we have a good profile to, to make it this time. So we are just hoping to see what will happen, but the most important thing is just to get the Premier League in Tamale. If we believe Tamil City, if not, because then of number COVID 12. And then number 12. Yes, we will we'll have been there because we are leading like eight points until that unfortunate thing happened. Um, we will take it on a good stride and um, as you can see on the log, Tamil City up to you, we are at the top, at least the first five. Uh, not to look down upon before, I could be you know, the mighty rest over there. I mean, they cause a threat to us, but uh, looking at what we are doing, we want to believe it to continue that definitely this is we should get a Premier League in Tamale. Hamza insists Tamale City are hardly out of gear and should be the chosen one among the three to pick the Division 1 slot for Zone 1. I'm basically, R2 is a tra mm. tradition. When mm. talk of Tamil, Tamale, is about R2, but uh, mm. they also have their problems. I'm happy they've now reorganized and then trying to challenge and yeah. make it to uh, the Premier this time. I hope it will continue that way. Um, Tamil City, we had our plans. Unfortunately, uh, our directors, those who were supporting us, 
<laughs> shift comes bit, yeah. to RTU. Mm. And I believe that's why they are doing well. But we are also doing our best. And if we also do our best, RTU is doing what they are doing. Definitely, we should have a Premier League here. And Steadfast too is doing wonderfully. So definitely, mm. we should have at least a Premier League this time. I've seen a lot of talent since I came. Uh, and because there's, there's perhaps no Premier League, we say that's why people are not paying attention. But is Ghana justified not to pay attention to the northern sector in terms of or relative to the kind of talents that you've got here? It's unfortunate. I, I passed by the sports center and I saw a lot of boys, over 200 boys, you know, playing, boys and girls playing. Yeah, I can tell you, it's natural here. It's natural talent. Talk of the Abidi Pillars, the Mohammed Gagos, Mubarak Wakasos. Don't talk of even Hamza Mohammed and the rest. Recently, Abdel Fatal from the north. We have better players than Abdel Fatal in the best. People are not looking at that. But we are happy it's now on the limelight. RTU, Steadfast, Tamil City are also doing well. They're on the first five on the Division 1. Uh, attention should be focused on here. They normally come here, get the good ones, go out there, the final, the warfare, the whatever, whatever. But if what we are doing now, we continue the good work that we are doing, attention should be focused on here. And definitely that will be the place and the moment God bless the will definitely come back. Determination and hard work at play is seamless, flowing from the management through to the fans and down to the playing body. Even though everything is by luck, maybe you might think, oh, this, this is a season for you to go into the Premier it, it will be a very bad season for you. Okay, so I'm assuring Tamai City fans that inshallah we'll try our best to put the team into Premier. Coming next season, they will also be getting the Premier matches to watch in Tamale. Uh, come and uh, come to training their numbers, cheer us up, and uh, we also do the work for them. When we see them always, you know that we, uh, we feel that uh, they, uh, they, they are important to us, and we also want to do something uh, in return for them to be happy. Steadfast FC, founded by Tamale South MP and Minority Leader in Parliament, Honorable Harun Idrisu, is another possible name in the Ghana Premier League literature next season. Enormous potential of young people with skills and with brilliance in football. They need exposure, they need an opportunity and they need a platform hmm. to showcase their skills and their talent. Uh, one of my Daily record is the fact that there is no premier team in Tamale. Yes. So many of the opportunities are lost yeah. because we don't have a premier team. That's why I pray that either RTU or State Fans uh, FC or Tamale City yes. uh, makes it this time round. And uh, we are lucky uh, President Kufu built this uh, stadium for Tamale, mm. which is serving a very uh, useful uh, purpose is underutilized yes. because of the fact that we do not have a premier uh, uh, club in Tamale even though there are many division one clubs but we necessarily need to be at the level of uh, premiership yes. so I'm investing quietly into football it's quite a very expensive undertaking. Yes. I, I was going to ask you how, how and, dreamy it is and, and uh, it can be as money gushing just like the politics I do, <laughs> but that one you can be hopeful if you are able to get lucky to hit a jackpot. Yes. As we are close to one, then you can smile at your investment over a long period of time. I've been in this almost a decade, mm. almost uh, yes. 10 years, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, you count your opportunities and you count your losses. Like Royal Tamale United and Tamale City, Steadfast FC have another football legend in charge of the agenda to get steadfast steadily into the Ghana Premier League. When you when you look around, I mean look at it's because of the, the, the premiership clubs here in the north, the reason why these stadiums were, were, were put up. And uh, coming to look at uh, Steadfast, Wild All Stars, uh, Real Tamale United especially, uh, that is not in the, in the, in the premiership again. It's, it's a bit worrying, but I mean, I, I, we don't blame anybody. We have to take the blame ourselves because uh, probably we, we let go certain things and we didn't do our work well. Now we are struggling uh, to, to come back. And gradually, uh, we're hoping that uh, one of uh, these clubs will, 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 will get back to the premiership. Good. Steadfast, you are beginning to 
you are becoming too steady and you are worrying the likes of RTU and, and Tamale City. What kind of work has gone into this to keep the club where it is? Well, um, to what I know and what I've been told, that uh, this club is just about eight, eight to nine years old and they've never come this far to even uh, 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 head in the, the, the league in, in, in these uh, years. And um, it's nothing. It's just a, a practical, simple uh, a football, a teaching of football that uh, we are putting into these boys. Uh, I have my, my philosophy where I, I almost teach them the way I used to play. I, 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 I love handling the ball. I love keeping the ball. Steadfast FC have their calculators out. More focused than ever to bring Premier League football back to Tamale. Watching Division 1 matches, uh, sometimes we come fed up with it because we've not seen the likes of Asante Kotoko, House of Hope, Dreams FC. We've not seen them for so many years. Uh, this year, we are trying our possible best to get a premier club in Tamale. Looking at our position, uh, in the next two matches, I think we will be the top of Division 1. And I pray that we will qualify for the uh, Premier League this season. It's been tough because like all the teams in this zone, like they are good teams. So like we are not getting things easy. But we are hoping to qualify like at the end of the season to qualify to the Ghana Premier League. While the search of a Ghana Premier League slot is ongoing, another area that needs addressing up north is the state of infrastructure. How many in Tamale easily point to the Aliu Mahama Stadium as the most decorated edifice? There's work to be done elsewhere. The Caledon Park immediately comes to mind. Used to be a wonderful home for Real Tamale United in Tamale. It was very difficult for teams to come over and beat Real Tamale United. The facility, if refurbished, can seat about 5,000 spectators, feed a number of Colts clubs and fast spring in Division 1 clubs too. The park is now at the mercy of adverse weather and nature. There have been promises of help, but all are yet to materialize. Uh, in my manifesto, uh, infrastructure was one of the key things I promised uh, putting up when elected as the chairman of the Northern Regional Football Association. I realized we had talent, but playing facilities, almost all available lands had been used by estate developers. So there was the need to actually look around and then see how, uh, where to get the needed land to actually provide training or playing facilities. So Towards the stadium annex, you realize there was this land lying fallow, and then it was not being used. It was just like a bush there. So I thought there was a need to actually carve out playing fields over there so that the kids could get uh, a, a number of fields to train. So I went there, had a team to go and then demarcate the place, had uh, graders to go there and then grade the place, did some leveling, and then uh, also had standard pools uh, installed at that place. And I think if you go there today, you realize that it's a place where over 200 to 300 kids converge on daily basis to actually train. Apart from that, even grown-ups go there to do, use it as their keep fit yeah. uh, playgrounds. Apart from that, I think even at the Caladan Park, uh, the old Caladan Park, uh, we have about uh, four fields within Caladan Park. Wow. The main Caladan Park, which is not being used currently because of the loamy soil that had been put on it, yeah. but uh, unfortunately could not be developed into uh, an astro turf or a standard field that was. So for now, you can use the main uh, old Caladan Park, but we have three other fields, uh, one being used by a coast team known as Great Eagles. Mm -hmm. Then we have another used by Real Republicans, and then we have the other one used by United Babies. 
when I went there, it was just the Republicans one that was quite good, but the Eagles one we had a lot of stones, concrete slabs, and a whole lot of things. I had to get an excavator to go there, remove all those rocks, put them aside, got some gravel to level the pitch, change the goal post, and then also went to United Babies Fault, changed the post there mm. to did some leveling. And for now, at least, we have uh, three standard pitches there that can be used for games at the old Caladan Park, beside the main Caladan right. Fault itself. So I think, by and large, now within the Tamale municipality, we have a number of fields that the kids are using, and I think that is helping a great deal. Heartwarming from the NRFA boss, but heart wrenching to think about the work that needs to be done. However, that's not the immediate concern of the Tamale faithful, and by extension, all four northern regions. They remain united in the quest to get a Ghana Premier League club and football back anyway. Tamale people are angry because it's been a while or it's been a year since Premier Team is in Tamale. So those years, yes, uh, Division One club, season in, season out. So we need a strong Premier Team here so that we can be enjoying it every day. Not less than nine years today since uh, the only club which we are representing Northern Region, that was uh, Real Tamale United. Since they were relegated, we've not been, uh, we've not seen any uh, Premier League team. And then looking at this kind of facility that Tamal is having, with that Premier League team, you know, that is so bad. So uh, this year, the four teams which are representing the Northern Region, the Division One League, we are just praying that they should do all their best, at least for us to get a, a Premier team here so that we also be enjoying the Gar Premier League some we need a Premier League club so that at least we can see other clubs from other regions. We can watch Kotoko, we can watch Haas, we can watch Ash Gold and then other big clubs. Yes, football up north when rich does serve the nation well. And just maybe, just maybe this may be the year. <laughs>